Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And today is going to be a great day. We are so glad to have everybody here. If you're a guest of ours here today, thank you so much for joining us and being with us today. TLC, let's give our guests a hand and thank them so much for being with us. We're so glad to have you here today. You have one opportunity to be a guest, and after that, you're just part of the dysfunctional family around here. Amen. We love, we're not perfect, but we will love you to death. In spite of your flaws and everything else, we know that God has had mercy and grace towards us, and we're going to have it towards you. So we're glad that you're here today and glad that what God is going to do. Now, this past week, we've had a couple of events around here that was pretty great. This past Sunday night, we had our men's men of purpose, and we had a tremendous outpouring of God's spirit, time of fellowship, and we're just excited about what God did there. And then last night, our ladies had their refreshed prayer meeting, and we had several that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost last night. And so we're excited about that, glad to what's happening around here. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of COVID, God's still God. And great things are still happening. So if you would, why don't you greet somebody right now, maybe somebody that you don't know. If you want to give them a hand, five, fist bump, whatever you want to do right now. Just be glad that we're here today. Awesome. Thank you so much again for being here this morning. If you notice our mission flags, the flags of different countries up here at the front, it's because it's our mission Sunday. And this Sunday we set aside the fourth Sunday of every month where we take up our missions offering that we support missionaries all across the world that are spreading this beautiful gospel. This day and every day they go out to countries, they leave the the, the comforts of home and they leave everything to spread this good news all across the world and so today we celebrate and we pray and we give toward those missionaries and brother Darrell is coming now brother Darrell is actually over in our missions department here at the church and he's going to pray over us today good morning there imagine somewhere in the African jungle this morning somebody is worshiping God Somebody's beating a tambourine somewhere. Somebody's a worshiping God. We've got a minister that's spreading this gospel across the United States, across the world. There's somebody's out there this morning. They don't have a keyboard. They don't have a, a, a uh, guitar. They, but they might have a tambourine or they have their hands. And they're worshiping God and they're dancing around everywhere. This morning, the reason they have that opportunity is your prayers and your support this morning. So this morning, I'd like to pray over our missionaries. I'd like for come on this morning for our offering. Um, this morning, there we have an opportunity there to uh, to worship God this morning, and uh, I'd like for uh, for you to pray with me this morning over our offering and for our missionaries this morning. Lord, we come to you today, thanking you for this opportunity that we have today to worship and worship you here today. Lord, I ask you to bless our missionaries this morning, Lord. Wherever they may be, all across the world, I ask you to bless them, Lord. Bless their efforts, Lord, as they're spreading your word today, Lord. I ask you to bless them in every effort that they have. Lord, I ask you to bless this offering this morning, Lord. Move upon our offering, Lord. Let it be used for the work of your kingdom, Lord. Let it be blessed this morning. Let it reach the far depths of the world this morning. Lord, we thank you today and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take up our offering right now. If you get your tithes and your offering, your Mission Sunday offering out right now. If you want to give through text, you can text 84321. Text the number 84321. You can put your amount, the type of offering it is, if you'd like to do that. If you'd like to give online, you can go to our church app. Go to online giving and follow the steps all the way down there. 
and you can be blessed that God's going to bless you here today. If you would, raise your offering up with me, and we're going to do something a little different. Brother Darrell's already prayed over the offering, so why don't you just wave your offering back and forth and let God know that this is what I'm giving you today. You've blessed me so much. You've taken care of me. You've opened doors. You've made ways, and God, I thank you for what you've done, and I'm believing as I give, you're going to bless me even more. So thank God right now for all that he's done. They're going to start our worship set. Let's get involved today. We ask you to come out the right side and go back in on the left. Good morning, Life Church. How many is ready to worship Jesus this morning?
know it like you, Jesus. And the strongholds are still being loosed. And God, we believe. And yes, we can see that wonders are still working. you feel like is dead in your life, whether it's your purpose, you feel like your passion, your zeal, your drive, remember that bodies are still being raised, and the giants are still being slain, and God, we
That your prayer this morning say, We need. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I wonder if you would just raise your hands right now. Would you just lift your voice unto Him right now and allow God to move on you? your hands raised right now, with your hearts lifted up towards heaven right now. Come on, Jen, sing that. Come on, yes. Come on, with our hearts lifted up towards heaven. than anything this morning, I think we could all agree, is that a move of God is more important than anything else. I don't know what you've walked in here needing today. I don't know the weight and the burden that you're carrying on your shoulder today. I don't know life's pressure that's upon but they're getting ready to sing this song one more time. And I'm going to ask you if you would just get out of the ordinary for a moment. And if you would just stretch your hands 
and say, God, I need a move of you. God, I need a move of you right now. Come on, Mike, let's sing it. Because mountains are still being moved. Yes, Lord. And strongholds are still being moved. Yes. Because God, we believe. Come on, he knows what you need. Yes, we can see that. He knows what you're up against. Wonders are still what you need. I don't know who you are that need a miracle right now, but I've come to tell you in the Holy Ghost, if you'll raise your hands right now, the miracle worker is going to walk you out. The miracle worker is going to touch you this very moment. I feel healing virtue. Woo! I said I feel healing virtue in this place. I feel healing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, healing, 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 heal
a divine touch of God, a divine move of His Spirit. Come on, somebody, yield to it right now. Come on, somebody, let God do it for you right now. Miracles come, we need your supernatural love to break. You're the God of miracles. Oh, God of miracles, come. We need your supernatural love to bring you. Nothing's impossible. John chapter 2. Y'all don't go far. Okay. John chapter 2. This week, God began to speak to my spirit, began to speak to my heart. I know you've been standing for a long time, but I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word. John chapter 2. Glad to see all of you in the balcony. We need to get some lights on up there for them. Make sure we get the camera on up there. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but we're just, Aim, you're just going to have to follow me. I'll tell you what verse I'm going to, okay? But look at verse 1, and it says, And on the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. I don't know what happened over last night, but somehow or another this print got a little small in my Bible. The second chapter says, or the second verse says, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. We find in verse 3 that they ran out of wine at this marriage. And the mother of Jesus came to him in the fourth verse and said, hey, you need to do something. Jesus said, hey, my hour hadn't come. But I want you to continue to read on. And his mother saith unto the servants. Now look at this. He just told her. My hour has not yet come. Mothers just have a way, don't they? Because Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour has come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith to you, do it. That's all she said. Whatsoever you say it's unto him you, for him for you to do it. And then it goes on to say, and there were six water pots of stone there. And now going down to verse 7, and Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. Now, now look at this. They filled the water pots with water, and they filled them up. And he said unto them, Grow out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bore it. I'm not going to take any more time reading, but I would love for you to read that chapter when you get home. 
You may be seated. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming with praise and worship. Thank you to this wonderful praise team and musicians uh, who have led us into the presence uh, of Almighty God, who has ushered us into his throne room today. I want to talk about water. Everybody say water. H two O, just water. Water, two part hydrogen and one part oxygen. It's the most basic chemical component on earth. It is also the most vital. It covers over 71% of our planet. It composes 65% of your body. And a well hydrated person with great survival skills, can stay alive as long as 12 days without water. But most of us would only make it three or four days. My wife would make it three or four hours. We get in the car, and if she don't have a water bottle, she starts panicking. And so I have to stop and make sure that we get her water. Yet because it's delivered through pipes to a half a dozen different faucets in our home, we take water for granted. We can't even determine its temperature. And you and I can determine its maximum water pressure, of course. The tragedy really is that in every, every 21 second, a child dies from a disease caused by unclean water. But when? When was the last time you stopped and you really gave God some thanks for good old-fashioned water? When was the last time? We don't appreciate the miracles that God constantly does day in and day out. Uh, forgive me for phrasing it this way, uh, but the problem with God is uh, that God is so good uh, at what he does, uh, you and I just simply take it for granted. Because what God does, it's like keeping our planet in orbit. We often don't even appreciate it. But if we would learn to recognize uh, the moment by moment miracles uh, that are all around us uh, all of the time uh, we will live in wonderment uh, every second uh, of every minute uh, of every day uh, could i tell you uh, that you and i would even break the joy code joy is not getting uh, what you want uh, it's fully appreciating uh, what you have I'm going to say that again. It's not getting what you want. It's appreciating what you already have. And it starts with the basics, like water. Because Luke, the second chapter in verse 10 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I'll tell you why we don't have the joy, because we never think about him keeping this planet in orbit. Uh, we never think about going to the water faucet, uh, turning the water on, uh, and water coming out that you and I can use. Uh, we never think about those things, uh, because we don't live in a wonderment uh, of every minute, every second of every day, uh, realizing uh, there is a God in heaven uh, who is watching uh, over each and every Every one of us. You know, water is flavorless, but yet there is nothing that tastes any better on a hot summer day. Water is a universal solvent. It puts out fires, and it's what all of us swim in. Like its transparent color hints at, water may be the most transparent miracle of all. It's overlooked and underappreciated by most of us most of the time. But the first miracle isn't really turning water uh, 
into wine. It's water itself. The seven miracles in the Gospel of John reveals the greatness of God's almighty power. From our human vantage point, they seem to go from easy to difficult. Or maybe should I say it this way, from impossible to impossible -er. Now you can't use that on Scrabble, okay? But turning water into wine is more than a major league magic trick. But it is not as difficult uh, as resurrecting a dead body uh, that has been decaying uh, for four days. Uh, so the miracle scene, uh, so the miracle we seem uh, to get probably even harder and harder. Uh, but remember, uh, to the infinite, uh, all finite uh, are equal. Uh, there is no easy uh, or difficult. Uh, there is no big uh, or small. Uh, there is no possible uh, or impossible. Uh, to an omnipotent God, uh, there is no degree uh, of difficulty. Revelation chapter 19 uh, and verse 6 says, And I heard, as it were, the, the voices of a great multitude, uh, and as those voices of many waters, uh, and as the voices of many thunders saying, uh, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, anything is possible. You didn't hear me. I said anything is possible and nothing is impossible. But you and I have a tendency when we need a miracle, we have a tendency to pray a little louder and a little longer. And sometimes even we pray in the King James English like a play writer or we'll pull out some Greek word that we've learned. But God is unimpressed with our theological learning. He hears our heart more than our words. Did you get that? He hears our heart more than our words. Uh, he responds to faith, uh, not uh, vocabulary. Uh, what Mary did not do at the wedding uh, in Cana uh, may be as significant uh, as what she did do. Uh, she did not tell Jesus what to do uh, or how to do it. Uh, but listen to me this morning. Uh, she simply identified uh, the problem uh, and she got Jesus uh, involved. Uh, they have no wine. Mary said so much by saying so little. Trust isn't measured by our word count. In fact, the more trust you have, the fewer words you will say. Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Folks, if you and I could only realize uh, that God wants you to trust him. Uh, God wants you to put your trust in him. Uh, God wants you to lean upon him. Uh, God wants you to understand uh, that he can make a way uh, where there seemeth to be no way. Uh, I know we're living in crazy times. Uh, I know we're living in um, peculiar hours. Uh, but I've come to tell you, uh, if you think it's bad now, uh, wait till a year from now. If you think it's tough now, wait to two years from now. We are not going to get any better. We are on a trajectory for the soon return of Jesus Christ. But the thing that you and I have got to do, we have got to put our trust in God. Our trust in God. Miracles. Don't depend on your ability to articulate the situations to God. There is no abracadabra. You don't need to know what to say. You just need to know 
where to turn like Mary did. And if you turn to Jesus, he can take your situation right now. What you're going through, what you're facing, what you're up against, the storm that is in your life, I'm here to tell you he can turn it right side up and right side out. Of course, you don't want to wait until you need a miracle. He wants you to seek him first I don't know the seating arrangements uh, that was at the wedding in Cana but I can tell you this much uh, Mary did not pay much attention to it uh, because she beelined uh, her way to Jesus Christ uh, because she knew uh, his anointing teaches you uh, about all things uh, it doesn't matter what you do uh, God wants to anoint you uh, to do it uh, without it uh, you will never turn water uh, into wine. Uh, how do you get uh, God's anointing? Uh, I'm here to tell you, you simply ask for it. Uh, God wants to give it to you uh, as much uh, as you want to receive it, uh, but you have to seek God. Uh, you've got to get into his word. Uh, you've got to get into his presence. Uh, the closer uh, you get to God, uh, the closer uh, you're going to get uh, uh, to his anointing anointing. Can I tell you today what makes this church different than some other churches is we made up in our mind we are going to get next to the anointing of Almighty God. We're going to get into his presence. We're going to move into that holy place. We're not tied to a schedule. We're not tied to an agenda. But there's one thing on our mind and that is is that we get into his Shekinah glory. You see, people want to have a relationship with God, but they never want to read his word. People want to have a relationship with God, but they never get into his presence. I've come to tell you the only way that you can get a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, is you got to get into this word. You got to get into his presence. Uh, and the closer you get into God, uh, the more anointing uh, you're going to find. Uh, the master of the ceremony uh, put it this way uh, to the bridegroom. Uh, everybody serves a good wine first. Uh, but when people have drunk freely, uh, then the poor wine. Uh, but you have kept the good wine until now. <laughs> I would have loved to have been there and just seen that sheepish smile on that bridegroom's face. Jesus didn't just help him save face. Jesus helped him put his best foot forward. Can I tell you today, Jesus don't just save the day, he makes the day. You didn't hear me. I said, Jesus don't just save the day. He makes the day. And that's what he does best. He can turn the worst day into the best day. And he always saves the best for last. The raw material for the first miracle is the most basic building block in nature. It is, a prov it is a proven reminder that God doesn't need much to work with. In fact, God don't need anything. I suppose Jesus could have started with grapes and miraculously extracted the three years fermentation process. And that would have qualified as a miracle. But by starting with water, Jesus demonstrates his ability uh, to take the simple things on earth uh, and turn them into something even more beautiful and something even more delicious. In much the same way, we wrestle. We, we just fight with the undermined statement that God is able to do immeasurably more than all that we could even ask or imagine. 
But Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Look at that. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could even ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Can I tell you today that there is a God in this house right now that is able to meet your need? There's a God in this house that has every ability to supply your need. I heard someone said it, and I agree with them so much. They said, I'm not going to waste my time praying for people that don't have faith. Because all I'm doing is saying words over an individual that's living in doubt and fear. Let me tell you something. If you've got faith today and you've got belief today that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, he can step into your world and do the miraculous. And maybe that's why Jesus started his miraculous miracle ministry with just H2O, to show what he could do next to nothing. He started with just six stone jars. They added water, they brought them to Jesus, and they watched what he could do. Hundreds of thousands components floating around in red wine, each with its own complex chemical formula. So to say that Jesus turned H2O into C2H5OH via the fermentation formula would be an over-understatement. The miracle at Cana involved hundreds of chemical reactions whereby Jesus turning water into wine is a mystery, uh, and that's what makes it a miracle. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, he is the catalyst uh, for any and everything that needs to be transformed, uh, whether it is turning water uh, into wine uh, or sinners uh, into saints. Uh, I've come to tell you uh, that Jesus uh, has the ability uh, to transform you uh, today. Uh, you may say, but pastor, uh, I've done this, I've done that. I've been here. I've been involved in that. Oh, hear me. I've got a God who is able to take the scars of this world and the scars of Satan and transform you into a great saint of God. The first miracle was a foreshadow of the last miracle. At the wedding in Cana, Jesus turned water into wine. But listen, at the Last Supper, Jesus raised a cup of wine and he said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sin. On that eve of the, his crucifixion, Jesus turns an ordinary cup of wine into a bottomless glass of grace. He transformed the fruit of the vine into an agent of forgiveness for every sin ever committed from Adam all the way through to the apocalypse. Without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. In the ancient Jewish sacrificial system, but to reverse, hear me, uh, but to reverse the curse once and for all required a sinless sacrifice. So God, so God made himself who had no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It's the ultimate transformation. Grace is a sovereign that bleaches the crimson stain of sin and washes you and I white as snow. Make no mistakes. 
that the greatest miracle of all is the day that Jesus steps into our life and into our life. It's how we, like Mary, make a beeline to Jesus. There are those that are sitting here today. The enemy is browbeating you. The enemy is telling you you can't amount to this and you can't amount to that. That you can't do this and you can't do that. That you've crossed one too many grace lines. That you've crossed way too many crosses. But God has come to tell you today. You can drink the cup of blessing. Because I drunk the cup of wrath. Today God desires to bless you. Today God desires to give you what you need most of all. And that is a new life. A fresh start. A new touch. Old things, he wants to pass away. And behold, he wants to make all things brand new. You see, it is the devil's job to cause you and I to sit in our pews and be sorrowful for the mistakes of yesterday. It's the devil's job to get you and I to live in a state of condemnation. It is the devil's job to get you to wrestle in your mind if you're worthy or if you're not. But I've come to tell you today, the God that turned water into wine and the God that held up the cup of wine and turned it into his blood is the same God that is here this morning. He said, I've come to transform you. I've come to make you new. I've come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. I've come to do in you what no one said could be done. When you really study, I didn't have time to really put all of the details of studying the components of that water turning into wine. To you and I, it just happened. But you just don't, by nature, turn water into wine. To make wine happen, it's got to ferment for three years. It's got to go through a process. It's got to take time. I don't know, I don't drink, and you shouldn't either. But they say that good wine sits on a shelf for a long time. Now, I do have to admit, there are times I've looked at a wine list because I just want to know how crazy people are for buying something. And and it's amazing, Brother Monty, the more expensive the wine is, the longer it's fermenting. The devil wants to put you in a place that you feel like there's no hope, there's no way out, And there's no way through. And yet God is saying, hey, I can take water and do with water what it takes men to do with wine decades to do. I can take simple H2O and make it taste better than the most fermented wine that you have ever tasted. Because the governor said, This isn't normal. That this isn't right. You're supposed to give the good wine first. But you have saved the best wine until now. Why? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus played a part in it. Can I tell you today? It doesn't matter what critics say. It doesn't matter what family thinks. It doesn't matter what society may say about you. When Jesus transforms you, he can take you from water and make you something that is so desirable. Because he has that power. He has that ability. To you and I, we think turning water into wine is a great defeat. We think raising the dead is something huge. We think healing a crippled limb is something magnificent. But Jesus looks at it all the same. 
He don't stress out over one more than the other. He don't get his hands all wringed out with sweat because this is going to be a little tougher than this. You see, he understands that anything is possible. And there is nothing that is impossible. The only ones that make it impossible are you and I. Only you and I put limitations on God. Only you and I are the one that sets boundaries where God can't cross. Only you and I are the ones that tell God he can't do this and can't do that. God's saying, try me. God's saying, I can take the simple thing like water and I can make it into something. You know what he's trying to tell us today? Don't sit there in your unforgiveness. Don't sit there in your shame and in your brokenness. Don't sit there and allow the enemy to take one more day from you. Don't allow the devil to deceive you one more moment. He's saying, remember, I can take nothing and make it something. I can take the impossible and make it possible. I have the to do what no one else can do. As we stand this morning, you don't have to be a mind reader. Neither do you have to have a crystal ball to realize that there are people in this house right now that need to know. You don't have to be very intelligent to understand that there are people here that need God to stretch forth his hand in your life. You see, we have put God on such a time frame that we sing three songs we preach 30 minutes because if I preach over 30 minutes Dexton's going to call me out and make fun of me but you've noticed I haven't said I'm closing yet right? I'm just preaching because when I say I'm closing they start putting me on a time frame here's the bottom line we forget that there is a God in heaven who's fighting for us, who's really looking out for us. Folks, he didn't just say we should have joy. He said joy is yours. The reason we don't have joy is because we don't trust God. The reason we don't live in a state of joy is because we have put more trust in men than we have in God. And as long as our trust is in men, we're going to fail. Because we don't have the ability to take water and turn it into wine. We don't have the ability to do the miracle with nothing but God. As they dim the house lights for me right now, I wonder if you, in this place, you're not walking down here saying I'm backslid. That's, that's not it at all. You're not walking down here saying, you know, I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. No, that's not it. But what we are coming down here to say, God, I give you my nothing so that you can make me something. Because you see, when every one of us look in the mirror, we really see who we really are, don't we? It's easy to put on a front. It's easy to put on an air. It's easy to try to make people think we've got it all together. But when you and I really look in that mirror, we understand who we really are, don't we? And God is trying to tell us today, 
You don't have to walk this road by yourself. You don't have to go through life on your own. I'm here with you. As they begin to sing right now, I wonder if you would just step out of your pew right now. And I wonder if you would just walk down here to this altar. And I wonder if you would just say, God, on my own, I'm nothing. But God, I give myself to you right now. And I'm asking you, God, to do the work that needs to be done in me. No matter what I've done, no matter where I am, no matter how I fall, you pick me up again. You have renewed my shame. You hold me as I am. You call me somebody up right now. I believe that God wants to pick you up and put your foot up on a rock to stand. I believe that God wants to lift your head up and say, you are my child and you're going to make it. I wonder right now as they begin to sing it because God wants to sweep in here right now. uh, Would you just raise your hands and say, God, uh, I present myself to you. Uh, Come on, I present myself to you, God. 